Hey, Taco Painter out in the Suits Crafting Wood Shop. Welcome out to my shop. So, I've been, uh, it's been a busy week this week. I've been working on a lot of different things. I've actually uh, been receiving a lot of stuff in for some testers from customers that have made some requests. One of the requests that I got was for my nebula blanks. So they've been reporting that my nebula blanks were a little too dark, had a little bit too much black in them. And so I've actually been working this week on reducing the amount of the black starry night effect that I have in my pen blanks, getting more of the nebula part, which of course is what its namesake is, uh, into the blank. So I used to have a 50-50 of the black starry night, and then the other 50% was the four colors that I use, the red, the violet, the blue, and then uh, a blue-violet-red shift powder. So it actually would change colors depending on the angle that you look at it at. And I'm reducing that down. I did a 33% test, which is right here. And it looks pretty cool. I don't know if I can get it to where you can see it on camera. But it does have a lot of really nice color effects to it. I like it a lot. You are definitely going to have to paint your tubes black with these because of the fact that the more color you add to it, the more see-through it's going to be. It's getting a lot closer to my Cosmic Cloud pen blanks, which are completely see-through and are nothing but the Nebula colors um, and absolutely no black starry night to it. And with those, you've got to paint them black or you just see the tube straight up and you don't even get any of the color effect. Because of the fact that I'm using interference powders, you've got to paint your tubes black in order to get that full color effect. So that's 33%. And then I also did some 25% and I like how these turned out a lot. Um, it's gonna be interesting to see how they turn out once they're actually turned uh, into a pen. I don't know if that's showing up at all. I can't see, but you know, they look pretty cool. I'm really happy with those, especially this, these faces here. You can really see the colors in there. Maybe not, I can't tell, because I've got my rear facing camera on instead of the screen facing me, so I can't see what you're seeing. Um, but I'm pretty happy with those. The 25%, it really does have a cool effect to it. And the 33% is better than the 50. The 50 has more black starry night, less nebula, of course, um, but has random spatterings of nebula. So it looks like you're looking at multiple nebulas. This looks like you're up close on one single nebula with the 33s and the 25. So I'm really liking that effect. It looks like we're zooming in, like on the Hubble telescope, zooming in and we're seeing so many and then we're getting in on closer on one and then even closer and it, it's pretty cool. I'm really happy with how it turning out. One other thing that I'm working on, since I use the interference powders and you have to have a black background for those colors to really show through, I figured why not just add the black directly in with the interference powders and see how that turns out. And they're turning out pretty spectacularly. I'm gonna get these cut up later today and uh, I'll throw some photos up on Instagram so you guys can check them out. But they are pretty wicked. There's the front uh, and this one, this one I used a uh, carbon, um, I wrote coal, but it's a uh, carbon black pigment powder on the colors for this one. And there's the back side of it. And then this one, I actually used the Alumilite black dye and then added the interference powders to it. And there's the back side of that one. And I figured I'd try out both of those. I usually use Alumilite black dye, um, the drops in the Starry Night for those. It's more of a consistent, but I figured I'd try the coal powder um, because it being a powder pigment, there's going to be gaps in between. And so using two powder pigments, the interference powders and the black powders, the colors are going to intermix better, I was thinking. You know, it's all theory until you prove it. Um, but that the colors would show through better than with the dye. The dye, I figured, was going to subdue the color too much. The dye was going to be too dark. Those colors weren't going to be able to show through. And so I was going to get a better effect using the powdered black pigment as opposed to the dye black pigment because of the fact that you can have granules, one black, a color, a black, and a color, and they'll kind of intermix and you'll see through better. You know, we'll see how it plays out. I got to get these cut up and then uh, we'll just see how they look. So I'm doing a full video on this, but I figured I'd show you. I broke down and invested in a micro jig gripper 
for cutting up pen blanks, and this thing has saved my life. Or at least a lot of time. Um, it is wonderful for using on the table saw for cutting up three quarter by three quarter pen blanks. I am in love with cutting on my table saw again. I dreaded cutting any small parts on my table saw because it's so finicky um, and I would get a lot of kickbacks. I don't have a riving knife on it. I have no idea what brand it is because it's not printed anywhere on the saw. Um, so without a riving knife, without a guard or anything, I was getting kickbacks almost 25% of the time um, on you know my off cut side of the, the table. So I just had to make sure to stay out of the way. And it just got to the point, once I got the bandsaw, I never even used the thing. I had so much stuff piled on top of this, different projects that I was working on, um, that it was basically unusable. Now that I have the gripper, that has changed everything. I'm keeping my table saw clean because I am coming out here and cutting up pen blanks all the time with this thing. Before I had to use my bandsaw, I'd cut them oversized because the bandsaw blade wanders a little bit. And then I'd go over to my sander and I'd spend half a day on my sander just cleaning up all sorts of blanks. Now I can rip them through once and if I want to I can touch them up on my sander just to give them a nice finished sand job on it. But they go through precise, exact, I don't have to go oversize anymore, I can go exactly to the size that I want and it's a life changer. And the safety aspects of this thing are well worth the cost of dropping $60 on a glorified push stick. But let me tell you, it's glorified for a reason. The best push stick that I have in my shop and it's money well spent. Because the amount of time that I've saved cutting up all of the pen blanks that I've sold in just the last couple of months while that my sale was running was well worth it. Because what would usually take me two days to cut up and sand all those pen blanks, it took me an hour and a half and I was done. It was miraculous. I wish I had done it sooner. I'm going to be throwing a full video explaining how to use this thing for cutting up pen blanks if you're interested. So be sure to stay tuned. I'll have that out here in a couple of days. I've been working on editing it all day. So it'll be out here real soon. For those of you that have been watching, I have been getting out my rope blanks. I love my rope blanks. They are so fun. They're so cool. My patriotic rope blanks, if you haven't seen them, I'll throw the link up here in the corner. You guys can check these out. They are so much fun. Some of them just have so much life and character, and they're so pretty, and they turn up just so easily. If you guys haven't seen it, check the video out, and pick yourself some up. I've got these up on Etsy. We've got 4th of July coming right around the corner. I paired these up with a Junior Independence kit from Turner's Warehouse, and it was uh, well worth the $17.76 that that kit goes for on Turner's Warehouse. It was a really neat kit. And the patriotically bound pen blanks were a perfect match for that kit. It was really neat. Go check it out. Um, these would go great with like any of your American Patriot twist pens, fountain pens, rollerball pens, bolt action, uh, gun pens, bullet pens, all of those. These would be a great fit for even your standard Sierras. The white pearl that's in there is gorgeous. And then, of course, that blue and red rope going through is just fantastic. I'm going to be getting some more colors out of this stuff. And I'm actually going to be getting some smaller sizes of rope. I went and talked to my dad, and I love talking with him. He's a fellow pen turner, and he's blatantly honest. And when I showed him my pen, he goes, I wish there was more rope in here. Or even just smaller so you could fit more in. And it's like, you know, I was thinking the same thing. So this is quarter-inch braided rope, and I'm going to be getting, I think it's uh, 3 16 so it's a 16th inch smaller, and then 3.5 mil um, jute cord. And so I'm going to be doing up those sizes, so I'll be able to fit more in, so you'll see more of the rope cutting through the blanks. But the quarter-inch is really neat, and I like how big and bold it is. It really stands out. Um, so be sure to check this out. Pick them up. I've got 30 of them sitting here waiting to go to your door. Also, by the time that you're done seeing this video, I'm going to have more of the Mother of Pearl blanks up for sale in my Etsy shop. So go by and check it out. I've got six more up for sale that I just cut up yesterday in my tutorial video for the micro jig. I've been doing a lot of casting this week. I've got some tube in blanks that I would love to show you, but it's a secret on the down low. For a fellow of mine on Instagram, Maddox House Designs, 
Um, he's ordered a bunch of tube and pen blanks that are really excited about. But you'll have to check him out. I'll see if I can throw a link somehow to his Instagram page on here. Um, go on, check him out. He's pretty cool. He's turned up some really beautiful pens. Some of them with my own blanks. Some of them with ones that he's gotten from other people. Um, he wants to get into resin casting. Just doesn't have the space for it. Pretty cool guy. Him and I have been working together a lot. It's been a lot of fun. Go check him out if you can. If I can find a link. If not, I'll throw it in the show notes down below. And uh, be sure to stay tuned because they're pretty awesome blanks. That's it for this week. Thank you so much for joining me out in my Shop Talk Tuesday. I know I haven't done one for a couple of weeks, and I'm very sorry for that. I'm going to try and get out here uh, some more here in the coming months. We've got summer coming up. I'm going to have to throw my AC and my door over here real soon. But stay tuned. Check it out. Happy turning. This is Suits Crafting, signing out.